Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar on local community partnership financial wellbeing in North Lanarkshire. My name is Lynn Sharp and I am a communications officer at the Improvement Service. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you're all doing well. Due to the current situation, we are doing the webinar from our home, so please bear with us if there are any technical issues. The webinar is being recorded and will be will be shared with you all later. There will be an opportunity to ask questions. Um, so once we've heard from all the speakers, if you could just use the questions tab um, to submit your questions. OK, so I'll now pass you on to my colleague, Sandra. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Hopefully you can hear me OK now. Um, my name is Sandra Sanke. Thanks for joining us in the webinar today. Um, we have around 86 people registered, um, so that's a really good um, representation. And we have a good spread today of across about 27 local authority areas in Scotland and other parts of the UK. I'm hoping that you'll all take something away from the session, as well as possibly make some new connections. So I'm going to share with you today an overview of this Pathfinder project, what our role has been in the project and that of others, and you know what outcomes we've achieved. So I've listed here the delivery, um, the speakers for today, and you'll see here that I'm going to hand over you know, to some of the delivery partners later. They'll share their own experiences of being involved with the project, followed by Alison um, Barnes from the Money and Pension Service. Okay. Next slide. So firstly, I want to introduce you to the Improvement Service. So just to give you a little bit of background about who we are, we're the National Improvement Organisation for Local Government in Scotland. So we're the National Improvement Organisation for Local Government in Scotland, small organisation. We've got about around 80 employees and, and our work's quite um, wide ranging and varied. We deliver around about 30 core products and services and the My Account Digital Public Service. I'll add a link to our website um, through these slides so that you can have a look at your own leisure um, and see the, the breadth of the, the work that we do. We're an outward facing um, organisation focused on partnership and collaborative working and sharing a good practice. And we work together in partnership with a range of organisations across Scotland over the last 10 years, the Improvement Service has matured in its offering and how it works across all the 32 councils um, with the national and local partners to ensure um, that they continue to support them in the challenges that they face, not to mention the current challenge. So what we set out to do, we were asked to actually convene a local community partnership with a mix of employers and community-led agencies across the public and um, private and third sector and we were asked to co-design a range of activity and interventions which would help enhance the financial resilience primarily amongst the squeezed and struggling segmentation groups of the working age population um, age 18 to 24. Um, we had a look at models that focused on achieving outcomes um, relating to managing credit and building a savings buffer um, amongst those target groups. We had a, a target of meeting a, a, a core um, reach of a minimum of 2,000 people. And the project had to run over three phases. You can see I've mentioned here co-design delivery and whether currently in the final evaluation and learning period. Okay, <clears throat> so what do we know about North Lanarkshire? We put together before we actually started to engage with them um, stakeholders. We actually did a bit of background information to research the area and, and produced a lot of um, infographics for the stakeholders that were coming to the discussions, um, as well as all the money and um, money and pension service um, working age populations and segmentation groups as well. Um, that was to give a, a bit of background and, and start to aid our discussion. What we know um, for the, the North Lanarkshire area as well, that the ML postcode, which then um, comes under North Lanarkshire, actually has Scotland's biggest PD loan, um, PD loans per head of population. That's according to the figures for the Financial Conduct Authority. And North Lanarkshire data shows that the total volume of approved loans in that year alone was just under the 30,000. So these figures 
um, as well as that it is ranked um, seventh out of all the local authorities in Scotland for levels of deprivation, all help to, to evidence the idea you need to, to target the local population. Okay. So in the co-design phase, we held a series of individual um, stakeholder engagement sessions. We were actually asked to be the backbone organisation to, to lead the coordination of this project. And in order to, to get buy-in, we had to identify who the state key stakeholders were going to be. So during the period of, sort of April up to September time, that's when we had the bulk of the stakeholder engagement to get buy-in. We held two workshops, co-design workshops, um, with key stakeholders in July and September. And that um, helped us to identify what interventions existed. Um, what good practice was happening, what interventions we could build on, you know, taking into account all the evidence that we'd heard and where we needed to target support for the target groups. And that then led us on to um, developing the delivery plan. The outcome of that resulted in the local community partnership comprising mainly of the local authority employer, one private employer, third sector interface, two credit unions, and the uh, Transforming Lives Community Network and um, community-led organisations like One Parent Family Scotland were involved with this as well. You get to hear more about that as we go on. This screen here just helps to visualise the activity um, from the first co-design workshop that was held with stakeholders. <clears throat> I'll just skim over this slide. It shows the range of um, stakeholders you know, that I've just mentioned. What we actually discussed in the group discussions, how we went about you know, getting to know what was actually already happening, what we needed to build on, and what people's roles. Um, we'd, I'd already followed up and had this one-to-one -one stakeholder engagement, so already had a fair idea of you know, what people would be able to bring to the table. And um, the co-design session brought that out, and the key partners were able to share with each other and what contribution they could make in the partnership. And a whole range of um, activities were identified. And at that first co-design session, there was commitment from the partners throughout. Um, and it was really successful and really um, pleasing to see that um, partners were, were in it to continue, not just come along to the first session and, and, and that was it, their, their involvement finished. People were committed to continuing to be involved throughout the lifetime of the project. This screen just helps to visualise um, the, the organisations that were involved. What we did, um, we put together um, a useful resource for the partnership and we set up a SharePoint so that everyone could access information. Um, a lot of the partners um, had provided resources and materials that could be used within the partnership um, for each other to share with each other and the, the people that they support. And this resource that we put together um, provided an easy link and reference point for all the partners to use. So we, um, as a result of the, the outcomes and discussions and from all the stakeholders, it was, it was agreed really that the financial inclusion team within North Lanarkshire Council um, would be a key um, organisation to appoint as a champion within the project. So that's what we did. And we came to an agreement with North Lanarkshire Council and the financial inclusion team that they would take on a champion role. And really what we mean by that is obviously there's a whole range of services that they deliver within their financial inclusion service. You'll hear from John and, and his colleague Lynn later on. But um, this was um, an arrangement to, to work and oversee the, the delivery plan and collaborate with all the partners um, within um, the maybe commitment within the, the plan to, to work with them. And um, I think you, you, you know the, the evaluation is, is really bringing out a lot of positive um, feedback from the engagement and working with the financial inclusion team. That became really apparent in the first co-design session. Um, the, the financial inclusion team have a role to, to chair with the North Lanarkshire Advice Network. And that came throughout the first co-design session that there was a real need there to um, engage with the network that um, with 
the, the other networks that I've mentioned here on this slide, and you'll get to hear about some of that, that later. Um, some of the key stakeholders that were involved with the co-design engage with a whole range of other partners in the, the local area that the financial inclusion um, service and advice network perhaps were not, um, didn't hold as strong links. So that's what the partners helped to um, achieve. This slide um, helps to, to show the reach that we've had. In, in the project, so working with the local local authority employer alone, um, the local authority has 17,000 employees, and you'll, you'll hear from, from Ian and his, his engagement and the work that he's been doing. Um, this is a, there's a whole range of um, events that have taken place in the community, so reaching out for over about 800 people, one-to-one face-to-face -face -face engagement. Um, that's also, out of the 17,000 employees, there's, there's been face-to-face -face engagement um, you know, for over about 1,200 um, employees. The, there's been several communications um, you know, on, on a few occasions out to the 17,000 employees, so everyone's been reached in some form of communication, as well as 36,000 council households. Every um, <clears throat> photograph and an icon has got something to do with some activity here. Not all the activity, this is just some of the activity um, that's been happening within the project. So from um, Motherwell uh, Football Business Club events, one of the partners in, in the, the Credit Union highlighted this event that's taking place and you know was willing to um, talk about partnership and be involved and there was over 100 um, businesses involved. Um, we've had employment fairs, we've had one parent families workshops, we've had private employer um, with construction employees, we've had tenant conference events and um, in, in employee road shows, we've had workshops delivered with own parents, young parents, um, and community events as well. And if I've missed anything, I'm sure um, our partners will, will pick up on that. And we've had the Challenge Poverty Week which kicked off in, at the start of the project in October um, and a range of the events happening then. And a lot of the activity was able to focus and be branded around Talk Money Week. You'll hear more about that soon. <clears throat> we took the opportunity to actually um, work with the community-led organisation One Parent Family Scotland. The champion delivered um, workshops to loan parents and um, we got consent from the loan parents to actually carry out some further research. This just gives a snapshot of some of the, the, the headlines that we're, we're analysing the, the, um, the interviews at the moment. We carried out and my colleague um, Susan, who's, who should be tuned into the, the webinar today, carried out um, interviews with 19 of the loan parents that participated in, in the workshops and we'll have a separate publication ready next month um, to, on the findings from this research. And firstly, we'll discuss it with the champion as well as one parent family Scotland partner. Um, and if any of you would like to know more about that and the learning that's coming from that research, then you can um, complete the survey at the end of the, the webinar and we'll make sure that we, we share that with you. So we managed to achieve what we, we set out to do and we managed to have a mix of public, private and voluntary sector partners involved. Um, you know, we have, um, what can you say, we had to really buy in from all, all the partners. This is um, what worked well, some of the challenges for us, um, time constraints, you know, I think if we had more time to have planned ahead, uh, and you know, managed to engage all the kind of key stakeholders. It was really quite some of our experiences were quite challenging initially, especially to get into the private sector and trying to engage some private employers. A lot of energy, you know, was put in to try to engage the employment sector. We know that that can be um, quite a common uh, thread throughout. Um, but we've, you know, we've, we've, we've had to put quite a bit of hands-on support into the project initially to, um, you know, get the stakeholders on, on board. Um, we had 
thought we would have worked with the evaluation partner. Unfortunately, the evaluation partner wasn't able to be appointed until quite late on into uh, the, the process. So that you know meant that we weren't able really to engage with them early on and get that added extra value into hopefully the, the, what else we could be adding and doing, enhancing you know what we were delivering. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, and what we set out to do, you know, the partners have, have, have delivered um, on everything, exceeded expectations. We've had great reach, great enthusiasm. Um, we were hit with a few challenges in terms of what we could communicate um, on the project. Um, but we're, you know, that now that we're at the end and we're sharing the learning and we'll have publications ready. We will look at how we can embrace the communications moving forward now with collaboration from partners. We had some restrictions, as you'll see here, as I'm sure everyone else has had as well with the um, election period. Okay, this is some of the feedback that came, came back from partners um, and the opportunity to expand the project. We've, we held a steering group session to look at you know, sustainability. And um, these are some of the, the recommendations that have come out. I'm going to skim on because I know that we're obviously probably going to be quite pushed for time and we've got other speakers to go through and we've moved on quite a bit of time now. Um, you'll get to hear about the tap and poverty work that John will, will lead on and I think I'll pick up on um, any questions that, that anyone has at the end of the, the webinar, if that's okay. Next steps for the project is, you know, completing all the learning and evaluation and we'll collaborate with the evaluation partner that's been appointed. We'll produce the, the, the learning paper from the one parent research, we'll produce a summary report of all the activity that's been carried out. I mean, today you're just getting to hear about some of it and from some of the partners. And then we'll be obviously looking at, well, what now? You know, what, what the partners, you know, what, can, what have they learned, you know, in the process and what opportunities are there? And that will all be written up and it will all be shared with some recommendations and discussion, you know, with partners at a local level and how, you know, they're going to look to take that forward. But I'll hand over to um, John Campbell now at North Lanarkshire Council and he'll be able to take you through um, some of his ideas for that. Thank you for listening. We'll come back in later on. Okay, well, thank you very much for asking me along um, this afternoon. I'll try and go through my slides as quickly as possible because I know um, I've got a colleague from our HR still to do uh, some slides as well and, and other presenters. So, my name is John Campbell and I'm the Financial Inclusion Manager in North Lanarkshire Council. Um, as Sandra said, we were approached to take part in the um, Local Community Partnership Pathfinder um, around um, affordable credit um, within North Lanarkshire. And I think one of the reasons why we probably were approached is because of the work that we were already doing within North Lanarkshire. So firstly, I'll just briefly run through what the financial inclusion team in North Lanarkshire does. So we provide the welfare rights, income maximisation, debt advice uh, service to resident North Lanarkshire Council. We also provide support, advocacy and representation with mandatory reconsideration, social security appeals and courts for residents of North Lanarkshire Council. We are also responsible for the commissioning and monitoring of external services uh, who provide advice and information on behalf of the Council. And uh, we are the lead team for tackling poverty in the welfare reform agenda in the North Lanarkshire Council also. Top of that, uh, we work corporately with other council services and the health and social care um, integration service um, to tackle poverty, deprivation and inequalities within North Lanarkshire. Just obviously some background information in North Lanarkshire, one in four children in North Lanarkshire live in poverty, one in four households can't afford to their fuel costs um, and then we're obviously quite um, a lot of work around, you know, in promoting that benefits doesn't get you out of poverty, but it can loosen the grip of poverty and can be a lifeline for, for many people. And also looking to promote equality across all of our services um, is key to tackle poverty. 
Our approach in North Lanarkshire has been we had a, a fairness commission back in 2019, so it was an independent fairness commission, and it set 16 recommendations, two of which you'll see in the next slide. Um, we then also, uh, in October last year, the council produced its plan for North Lanarkshire. It's a plan for North Lan. It's just a one approach plan. And then on top of that, the other local authority in Health Board in 2019, we were done a lot of work around local child poverty action reports, which we submitted back in June 2019. And again, in part of the um, action plan around that was to do stuff around affordable credit. We're currently at developing our overarching tackling poverty strategy, which again, we'll have an action plan. And this one in 2020 will incorporate the action plan for, for the local child poverty action report for 2022. To oversee all of this, we established a fairness and wellbeing action group, which was a members only group, um, which over the last 18 months has taken a variety of, of evidence under a different a variety of different topics, one of which being um, affordable credit and Sandra um, and the Canegie Trust and or some of our credit unions have been along to that group and provided um, evidence um, and shared pra good practice uh, with the group as well. All of that sort of kind of learning and evidence have been incorporated into the Tackling Poverty Strategy and Action Plan. The two main recommendations that coincided with the local uh, partnership from the Fairness Commission, as you'll see, was to increase um, credit union uh, payroll deduction. Um, over time, we have uh, learned that it's um, increased credit union saving deductions that is the right language to use. So we've been working uh, quite um, quite intent, intensely um, in trying to increase um, people's ability to take uh, credit union saving deductions. Now that so that means working with our credit unions to ensure that they can provide that facility, and then also working with our businesses within North Lanarkshire to ensure that their residents, um, sorry, their employers, employees can can access um, that scheme. Um, one thing that we're looking to do within underneath the tackling poverty strategy is under the community benefits for tendering for local authority um, contracts. Um, that we, we would add that um, the successful uh, tenderer um, should, you know, would get more weight towards it, it, their score if they offered or allowed their um, employees to access say, credit union saving deductions, although that's still in its early stages just now. The other recommendation was to provide access to affordable credit. So we have around 17 local credit unions um, some really, really small and, and some quite big, but we also have two sort of kind of regional credit unions operating in, it, in our area, which is Lanarkshire Credit Union and Scott West Credit Union. Um, so again, we're working with all these credit unions to, to make sure that if we're looking to increase um, savings de um, deductions from payroll, then obviously we need to have the, the credit unions available for, for that to happen. So the local community partnership for North Lanarkshire, the financial inclusion team, as um, Sandra has said, our role was to be the champion, um, both internally um, within the council and all, um, and externally. Um, what we have found that has worked really, really well and has is something now that that will carry on forward is it certainly brought the financial inclusion team and our HR. A team closer um, together, particularly looking uh, at our own staff grouping. Um, we're obviously in the sense of the the reach for the Pathfinder around 2,000 people. Uh, we were able to do quite easily by getting the communique out to to all of the employees within North Lanarkshire Council, and it has meant then that the HR team has been able to to develop a lot of a financial initiative for the employees, but I don't want to steal um, Ian's funder because I'm sure he'll cover quite a bit of it. But it's certainly one of the, the main positive of it is the strengthening of the relationship internally between the financial inclusion team, HR and, and other council services. Externally, 
well, it certainly um, allow uh, it's certainly strengthened the relationship with a lot of uh, voluntary organisations who have taken part in the um, partnership. Um, Sandra had mentioned uh, One Parent Family Scotland, but there are a variety of other organisations who we have worked quite closely with. And again, it's just building up that trust within relationships um, and good partnership working and allowing everybody to work to work towards the same aims and, and objectives. So it has strengthened relationships. It's also allowed us to create new relationships and then to link people into what was already existing within North Lanarkshire for advice services for our so you've got the North Lanarkshire Advice Network, uh, which the financial inclusion team uh, chair. So again we, we were able to make sure that people got uh, a mixed economy and, and were able to access the independent independent services if there were still concerns around talking to a council service. We strengthened a relationship in the sense of affordable credit um, uh, along with our housing services, our employability services, and again that has allowed us then to sort of kind of plan for the future, certainly around our, our tackling poverty strategy. The Fairness and Wellbeing Action Group was a member group I mentioned quickly there had um, over had received evidence um, and then made recommendations for the, some of that evidence to be included within the tackling poverty strategy and in, in relation to its action plan. That fairness and wellbeing action group was meeting um, every eight weeks, but from now we'll only meet uh, twice a year with the overarching tackling poverty strategy going well. Our, supposed to be going to the policy and strategy committee in, in the 4th of June, but considering uh, for approval, but considering the current circumstances, um, all council committees um, have ceased just now, so I'm not really sure whether that will, so I'm assuming that it will just go to our corporate management team for approval and the chief executive under these delegated powers will, will, will implement um, the strategy and, and in particular its action plans. It does within the action plan cover quite a lot around um, affordable credit and it also take in quite a lot of the learning that we've had um, during the last um, three, six months um, for, for the local partnership. Um, some of the challenges for us is the um, again, I mean Sandra will be referenced the time constraint, um, you know, was quite tight. Um, Another challenge we sort of kind of face, particularly when we were working with external employers, is that we had a, a really good external employer who was really, really keen to, to work, with, work with us. And we did do a lot of good stuff together. However, when their um, deadlines and, and time constraints um, for, for their workers did um, prove a bit of a challenge and indeed that some of the work that we want to do with them and what they want us to do is, is still um, incomplete and um, and again because of the current circumstances but we're not really sure how that's going to um, pan uh, pan out. Um, we, we are going to take, as I said, what we've learned into our overarching tackle and poverty strategy. What we're looking to do is to establish a, an affordable credit um, forum looking at um, giving people access to organisations who will help them save, giving people access to affordable credit, whether that be through our credit unions or whether it be the community financial development initiatives such as Scott Cash and Conduit. Um, we're looking to, as I touched briefly, under the community benefits for the tendering, building in more community benefits to the tendering process around affordable credit, around savings, and, and, and around access. Um, and, and we're hoping that, you know, for our sake, if, if people do in the future are successful in getting contracts if off the council, then that all of, one of the things that they will do will be allow people to have um, saving deductions uh, along uh, with credit unions. We're well, making sure again that North Lanarkshire um, affordable credit uh, action um, coincides or, or operates similarly to, to the new UK strategy for, the, for financial well-being. Um, and 
ultimately the end of it we're looking to deliver affordable credit to, to the residents of North Lanarkshire Council. Now, what I'm going to do is just quickly then is ask Lynn Daniels, who's a senior officer in my team, who um, overseen the, the delivery programme, and to see whether Lynn wants to add anything more on um, regarding the challenges um, and what worked well and, and what hasn't worked so well. So I would hand over to Lynn. <clears throat> my uh, laptop's cleaning up a wee bit with my connection, so I'm sorry if I get cut off. Um, I think it was, um, as you've said, John, the challenge was perhaps with the external um, business, but they certainly were keen, and they are keen, and that is something that we will follow up on in future. I think it was actually very good for the people that were involved in it, because it certainly um, enhanced what network relationships we've already got and we've made new relationships so I think it's actually really been quite positive <clears throat> uh, time constraint yes certainly was uh, difficult trying to deliver uh, quite a lot of the the things ourselves the workshop sessions but they certainly uh, were beneficial and we got a lot of interest in it Likewise, with our top money week, I think that really allowed us to engage with staff within the council that maybe wouldn't have engaged with us before. So I think there has been a lot of uh, benefits from from this, and it's just about building on it and making sure that that people don't feel that we've said oh, we're going to do something and we don't don't move it on. Okay, uh, thanks very much, thanks. Uh, Len. So, Lynn from Improvement Service, that's our presentation. Is that okay? Yep, I'm just handing over to Ian just now. Okay. Oh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay there, Lynn? I can hear you and I can see your slides. Oh, super. Uh, oh, good afternoon, everyone. My name's uh, Ian Stanger. I work in the uh, traditional HR arm of the council. Uh, proper job title, Sunday title, leader and talent uh, development lead. And uh, I work under the chief exec uh, director. Just moving the screen on now. Just waiting for the, the screen to move on. Just went, so I was saying uh, I, I'm in one of the four service areas of the council, uh, HR, arm people and organisation development all came together three years ago from Uncentralised and part of that remit was bringing together all our different HR, health and wellbeing and reward packages together uh, under the one branding, uh, and we termed that NL Life. So a key feature of NL Life was our financial wellbeing of staff. I'm just trying to move this slide on. Um, maybe if you try using the arrows, if you hover over the bottom left corner of the slide, usually the little arrows that come up. Yeah, the, I would say the computer's crashed. Oh, oh we can yeah. see them now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ah, great. Thanks. Uh, so uh, here's the uh, four service areas of North Lanarkshire Council. So I'm based on Chief Exec, and the People and Organisation team is five sections: Employee Relations, Employee Service Centre, which handles the administrative uh, arm of the HR requirements; Health and Wellbeing team, HR Business Partners, and I'm based on the Talent and Organisation Development team. Uh, so. My uh, 
uh, one of my areas of responsibility is in our life. And you see here the four, and eight, four areas uh, which I coordinate uh, under the banner of NL Life. Now, I'll just take you on to the NL Life site. And so here is a home page for uh, NL Life. So staff access here for all their support and wellbeing uh, that's available to them, whether it's their shopping rewards, under rewards and recognition, uh, health and wellbeing support from podiatry to healthy lifestyle checks, uh, flu vaccinations, and mental health, and then all the learning opportunities open to them, and then in our life, your financial uh, wellbeing. Uh, so I'm just clicking to here. Uh, so you've got an introduction here. You see, we've got a video from John, uh, who we're just hearing from, uh, previous to myself, uh, to really set the scene what financial wellbeing is all about and introduce the great support that is open to all staff. Uh, and number one, uh, the staff referral scheme to the financial inclusion uh, team. Uh, so staff can access confidential information in a way that best suits them uh, by our own financial inclusion. A team and they get support on a one-to-one -one basis, whether they want to do it by text message, phone call, uh, email. Uh, uh, John's team's been uh, very flexible uh, to the, the different needs of staff, and that's been uh, popular. And then we've got uh, trying to get a nice blend of some in-depth material to some uh, light, uh, lighter uh, touch uh, material here. I'll just scroll down, see uh, how uh, curb your spending. That's a wee a challenge on how much you spend on your non-essential buys, like if you have a coffee a day, what that actually tallies up to over the space of a week, a month, a year. And you see, very keen to promote the financial support available, for that fantastic financial support available through credit unions and some guidance on keeping safe online. So we've really tried to pull out here some of the top tips and support that's available uh, to to employees. And we've got reducing your energy bills and in particular in house retirement planning workshop that we're on, uh, pension advice, and then further discounts available exclusive as a NLC uh, colleague. Uh, so we had Last November, the Top Money Week, and we really used that as a platform to have a strong focus and highlight to staff the great options that are available to them uh, and introduce a more wider all the, the package which is under you know, if your financial uh, wellbeing. I'll just go back to the slides. Uh, part of that top money week, we ran some stalls. Uh, in the bottom left hand corner, we have the Civic, which is our headquarters. Uh, so, at the stalls, we had the financial inclusion team represented, uh, along with our two credit union providers who are available to staff. So, that was the uh, Lanarkshire Credit Union and Scott West. And we went around regional uh, local offices and top right, you see, we're in the, the depots extensively uh, as well. So we ran some competitions through uh, Top Money Week, and uh, we had a really good uptake and involvement there. And we had uh, all user emails, posters, our Connect as our in intranet. And so we had the top uh, banner uh, screen along there, and the bottom right hand corner is our internal messaging system. And here we've got one of the depot sessions pictured. We've got our chief executive, you can see along the bottom here, making a comment uh, on uh, the Top Money Week. So that was great to have uh, Des involved in that. Uh, over the Top Money Week, uh, we've got a good number of employees involved face-to-face uh, -face, uh, across 24 events. And uh, that was uh, targeting 18 different teams. That was from conferences to smaller uh, workshops uh, in the local offices. So it was a busy week. And it was fantastic. We had great uh, support from two credit unions and financial inclusion team uh, along all these sessions. 
so staff had a good diet, good access if they were along to talk uh, over any elements uh, face to face, find out uh, more information on what was available uh, to them. So when we setting out to really improve our uh, you know, life focus on financial well-being, I'd come across uh, this breakdown on looking at for internal financial uh, well-being strategy. And I was looking again throughout last week and breaking that down, I was doing what's worked well. To the, the top one there, how to convince senior leadership. That was a, we had that from the word go uh, for the uh, Fairness Commission, giving it such a strong focus and platform at that level. Uh, with doors open in terms of support and resource uh, to, to get, dedicate some time to, to really improve the financial uh, well-being offering to staff uh, and highlight it. Uh, second one, how do I find out who I need, need to help? Uh, John's team are absolutely essential and it's fantastic. Uh, all their, their support and uh, pulling all the required uh, strings and uh, making the contacts to, to give us a platform to take it forward for staff, uh, credit unions and such. And m m measuring financial wellbeing offer is effective. Through uh, NL Life, we can see a clear breakdown on all the clicks and hits and what's proven popular. Uh, so we can track uh, what's been uh, catching staff interest and what they are engaging in. Uh, so that's a, a really useful uh, measurement. Uh, even better if we've got a long way to, to go, I feel, and uh, having it more as, a, as an everyday conversation. Uh, but I feel we, we've taken it forward a great deal by getting a focus on it like the Top Money Week. And it's great having colleagues approach me uh, and mention uh, what they, they've utilised from all the support and looking at really how we can take it forward. Uh, the communication uh, further, we've got all the ch challenges you'd expect from the local authority and many different uh, team makeups and it's trying to reach all the old colleagues uh, so they've got equal access. Uh, and I think that's something we still really need to take uh, uh, forward to the week, go access to the support and wellbeing offering. Uh, that's there. And so that is me giving you hopefully a whistle stop tour on what we're really focused on uh, as our internal offering uh, for staff and the, the context it's at within. So I'll just hand back to you now, Sandra. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ian. Thanks very much, John. Um, that was a great, you know, quick run through of um, all the activities that you've been delivering. I think it was good to give that online um, navigation around, you know, some of your internal employee benefits platforms and showing really how you've built on the financial wellbeing pages. I think as well the the two credit unions that you've got in the payroll, you know how you've you, you know you could have gone in a wee bit deeper there and showed as well the platform that's been set up and how you've got that streamlined process, you know, for employees to be able to to access um, the the credit union um, is a really you know positive um, positive outcome. Um, so thanks thanks very much. If anyone wants to obviously know any more about any of this, they can, can ask us at the end and, and follow up afterwards. So I'll thank you both and it's time now to pass on to one of the other um, local community partners, which is um, Peter Ann, PA, known as PA, from Remploy, who chairs the Transforming Lives community. Thank you, Lynn. Right. Can everybody see my screen okay? Yes, I can see it. Perfect. Okay, let's see yeah. if we can scroll across as well. Excellent. Okay, so my name is Peter Ann Patterson. I'm the partnership manager for Reemploy in Scotland. Um I'm gonna tell you a bit more about the Transforming Lives community, kind of how it came about, why we have it, etc., and, and a bit about kind of how we utilize this to support this this group. Um, and get a bit more information across for people. So the TLC itself for us, it is very much around getting people um, talking, networking, um, as many partners as possible. It's it's not dependent on what sector you're in. It's open to all sectors. Um, 
is very much around tackling Scotland's key challenges. So we, we're looking at employment and skills for people and how people access those services. Um, when you speak to the general public, they often say they don't know who to speak to, how to access it, where to get it from. Um, so we're trying to take away that kind of fear of people not knowing where to start and give them a wee platform. So when they're working with us on our, our whatever program you happen to be working on, if you're part of the TLC, then you would know who to go to for specific specialisms and support. Um, as, as a group, we report on our findings. We look at um, where people tend to refer out to more. We can only do that from ourselves. Um, we're always looking for information from other partners where that's possible, but, but we have reports that we're able to pull from where our teams are, are utilising different services and how often those are. Um, and we, we're quite work very closely with Scottish Government around that, about what that looks like. Um, so that's helping in designing the future programmes that are coming through. Um, it's very much user-led the way that we do this. So we deliver Fair Start Scotland uh, as Remploy in two areas of, of Scotland, and we've utilised the TLC to support that. Um, and it's user-led in the way that it's up to the person what support they feel they need to help them get into work. Once they tell us what they need, we then have the organisations we can access. So it's very much driven by them um, and not us dictating to them as, as to what they're going to do next on the programme. Um, it gives a direct access to a large number of stakeholders. So we are forever growing the TLC. I'm always looking for new partners to get involved and I utilise the existing members to let me know of any. Um, I've had quite a few lately from DWP actually who've mentioned a few partners that I hadn't heard of before that I'll be getting in touch with um, to see if we can bring them on to the Transforming Lives community and, and give more access to other partners from them as well. It's very much about collaborative working. Um, every meeting that we hold, it's we only do them quarterly, but what we like to do is make sure that it's involving as many partners as possible. I ask partners for support as in to what the next agenda is going to be, what sort of things do they want to have happen. Um, and the collaborative working comes through knowledge and experience of those partners to tell me what they want. When we saw this program come up and this pilot come up, it, to me, it was a great opportunity to bring a, a group of, or an organisation in who are working on a specific thing that's, that's very relevant to a lot of the partners that we work with. So when we brought them in and, and got the improvement service in and the financial inclusion team in to kind of do a workshop, it was true collaborative working because it came from loads of different partners and we got a lot of examples from, from different people who have people that are on totally different parts of, of their journey. So it was good to kind of hear from all, all of those people and understand the different barriers that people are facing at different stages in their life. We like to share success stories. Um, we do a lot of good news stories ourselves and where possible, we will involve those um, organizations in those good news stories. Um, my favorite ones are where they involve more than one partner organization um, on somebody's journey, just to show how that collaborative working can really make a difference to somebody's life. So this kind of gives you an idea where we are now. Um, so we have over 100 organisations. We have national and local forums. So the TLC actually started at a national level. Um, it was very much around the new commissioning for Scottish Government. We were looking at what we could do to get organisations to work together and make sure there was collaborative working from the word go. Um, but about two years ago, we decided that we needed the local aspect of that. So once everybody knew where they were working, it was how do we get local organisations involved and actually listen to what's happening on the ground. So we have a Lanarkshire forum and we have a Dundee and Tayside forum as well. Um, we did used to have a Glasgow forum, but when we came out of Glasgow, we had no way to kind of ensure that that was still going ahead. Um, but what that brings is people who are closer to the work give their representation on what's happening and what's needed. Um, and it also gets people networking at a local level, which means that there's more partnerships formed and more collaborative working that actually takes place. It's a very much established network. We've been around for three years. We have a due diligence process behind every partner that comes through. And um, for the partners that are on the line that might have been through that, they can tell you it's quite lengthy. Um, but it's very... Um, very much around making sure that when we're sending people out to these different organizations it's a reputable organization we, we understand that they are um they, they've done all the checks we've done all we've got the policies in place etc so we go through that process for every partner that we bring on board um we've had over 800 referrals now that was taken um a few months ago there's likely to be over a thousand referrals out to our tlc partners from Ramplay alone and um, that's across dundee side and lanarkshire 
um, and what we look at, we try to record all that because it, it shows us what partners we're using, it shows where the successes are and our reports can tell us how long somebody has stayed in work once they've gone through that process as well. Um, there's multiple special services, um, there's over 100 organisations at a national level and over 60 organisations in just Lanarkshire alone um, and the reason for that is because there's so many different niche organisations that do something that really make a difference to people's lives so we try and bring on as many as possible so that when we're looking at specific people's journeys you know, it doesn't have to be halfway across the country to go and get that support. It's something that might be on their doorstep. And we very much look at the partner collaborative work and we make sure that that's a, a regular thing. Um, I'm always looking for support from partners to, to keep things going. So this gives you a bit of an idea. This is a, at a national level, looking at the different partners that have been involved. Um, it gives you an idea of kind of the things that we've been doing. Um, it's a lot when you look at it like that. <laughs> So our last TLC event in November, we had, um, as I said, we brought in the financial inclusion team um, and the improvement service to look at kind of how to get organisations together. There was about 30 organisations in attendance at that particular forum. Um, the workshop enabled multiple barriers and also suggestions. So I know I talked about earlier about the success of that. It was a really good morning. We were a bit strapped for time on the day, which is a bit unfortunate, but I wanted to make the priority of this on that day to make sure that a lot of that information was gathered and captured and I know that the guys got a lot from it um, and multiple um, networking did happen on the day which I know has resulted in more conversations being taken forward with specific organisations which is great to hear. So this is the contact details for our offices if anybody is interested. Um, my contact details are on there. I'm happy to take on new partners all the time. Um, any specialism that you know of that are out there that you might think we should get involved then please do let me know. Um, I have put a week COVID-19 update on there about our branches so we have closed all of our branches as I'm sure most of you have as well um, but we are doing everything remotely so our service is still working it's still happening um, and we are taking on new referrals as well as still working with our existing participants as well um, so yeah all the details are on there all the numbers on there are all diverted to specific phone numbers as well so you can still contact those um, specific numbers but as I said if you want to contact me to ask any more about either Remploy and what we do or even the Transforming Lives community and if you want to take part then please do get in touch. So that's me for today. Thanks PA that was really informative and um, just to add on obviously the um, financial inclusion um, champion um, delivered the workshops with the Transforming Lives community what that you know has led, led on to now is a whole range of other um, suggestions and ideas for further collaborative working. So, um, and a, a full range of other interventions, you know, um, that have come out of that workshop. So we also now need to look at how can those needs be met and how can the partners um, address that and look at scaling up their activity. So those further conversations will be taking place. Um, as we move on. I'm really conscious that we've moved on um, a good bit of time. We are running a little bit over. Thanks very much, um, you know, for everyone for being with us. Um, we're just going to keep running running over um, and, you know, to give us um, maximum value. Should we probably have another 10 and then minutes for Alison and then, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes or so for, for questions. As if everyone is okay for time, we will we'll carry on and I'll hand over straight to yourself now, Alison from the Money Pension Service. Thank you. Hi everybody. Um, I'm just going to try and get this slideshow up and running. Right, how's that looking, Lynn? Is that okay? We just want to move the tab over. Just click the orange arrow. No, just get out of your road. Oh, yes. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks very much. I will try and be as quick as possible because I'm conscious that um, we're actually running over now. But uh, thanks for inviting me along. And um, just to say that uh, all of this work that's happening is part of a wider programme that the Money and Pension Service are funding across the UK. And I'll give you a little bit of flavour of that as we go on. Um, so, I'll try and work. 
Everybody seems to be having the same problem with moving slides on. Oh, oh here we go. There. Um, so just just to for those who don't really know us, the Money and Pension Service, we are an amalgamation of three organisations that came together last year, which was the Money Advice Service, the Pensions Advisory Service, and uh, PensionWise. And these are our objectives and functions. And I'm going to talk today about one of the um, objectives that we have, which was to develop a, a national strategy. Um, just obviously in these very challenging times just now, we have a lot of information on our website about coronavirus. We have uh, lots of guidance around what the government have recently been announcing with support. Uh, and we've also got a Facebook page, which um, I could ask Sandra to send in links to afterwards. Uh, we've got a lot of people asking questions on there about their current circumstances as well. Um, we've also got a helpline for money guidance, um, we've got a pensions guidance helpline, we've got web chat, and for anybody that's interested, we have lots of tools and guides, and we can syndicate our content out to you. And I think at this point in time, obviously, we need to try and get as much information out to people as much as possible. So just do a quick um, overview of um, why we've started to look at developing a UK strategy for financial wellbeing. We did a lot of work over the past year. These are some of the figures, and actually, I think these figures will change quite dramatically over the next few months, depending on, on what happens. Um, but these are the baseline that we did last year around why financial uh, wellbeing uh, is really important. Uh, so if you think around 5.3 million children do not get a meaningful financial education, and we've surveyed children across the whole of the UK, and around about half in Scotland are saying they can't remember having had meaningful financial education. Um, and 22 million people do, don't know what they need to do to plan for retirement. So see, these are some of the reasons why we need a strategy. Um, and also, um, everybody's been talking a lot about financial wellbeing. It's great to see the work that's been going on in North Lanarkshire. Um, but it is about feeling uh, secure and in control, and it will be quite a stressful time for a lot of people just now. So we want to try and support them as much as possible. Um, and obviously, lots, lots of people are, are no longer in the workplace, so that has changed that dynamic. So the overarching uh, sort of framework for the strategy is set out on this slide. It's a little bit busy. Um, we've set out very challenging 10-year goals. Um, obviously, in the, immediate, in the immediate term and the short term for this year, we will be recognising that there's areas here that it probably will not be possible for us to, to, to be doing work around encouraging more savings, for example. I think more people will be using their savings, um, but we also want to get people to think about the sort of future and coming out of that. So, so whilst we look very much at a short-term plan for Scotland, we'll, we'll develop a delivery plan. We'll also be looking to the medium and the long term and the medium term about how do we, we, we support people through this crisis and start looking to the future as well. So very challenging targets over the 10 year period and over the next six months, we will start to develop a delivery plan for Scotland, hopefully that will be published towards the end of the year. That will set out how we're going to work against some of these agendas um, and actually how we link in with Scottish Government policy context and really get as much input from our stakeholders in Scotland um, as much as possible. This will help determine how funding is, is channelled. Um, there'll be opportunities to work with others on, on pooling funding, for example. So uh, lots of work going on over the next six months. Uh, just to say as well that uh, we were due to have an event at the end of this month, but it's now a webinar. Uh, that will drill down into some of the statistics for Scotland. But it also gives an opportunity for people to feed into this. And um, I'll come on and talk about how some of the ways that we're that, that we're actually doing this. So we've set up lots of challenge groups from across the UK. We're now doing them all online um, for uh, each of the agendas for change, and in some cases more than one. Um, Apologise if you hear my dog barking in the background. That was inevitably going to happen. Um, so we have all of these challenge groups looking at all these particular topics and we have cross-cutting gender and mental health. We're also looking at workplace as a mechanism to get to people. So, you know, we can reach a lot of people through the workplace and the work that we do. The challenge groups has representatives from across the UK with uh, specialists in their field and really looking at what can be done in the short, medium and long term. And they will work with us on the delivery plans as well. Uh, 
we produced challenge packs for each of these groups and uh, we will be sending them out to stakeholders in Scotland to get feedback and the input that we need um, because we can't do the delivery plan with the one we have to do it in conjunction with everybody else. A uh, little bit on pathfinders that are happening um, across the UK and in Scotland. We're, we're, we're doing a pathfinder on uh, what's called Top Learn Do, which is a parenting programme to teach children about money. Uh, we, we started doing some work with Shelter Scotland on money supporter training. So that's training frontline practitioners to help deal with people in supported housing. We're doing some work with Young Scott and obviously the local community partnerships. Um, in Wales, we're doing some work on mental health and apprenticeship. Northern Ireland, uh, the local community partnership is, I think, with Newry Credit Union England, it's Birmingham Council. Um, obviously, some of that work has had to change because people aren't out in the field um, working with people. So we're trying to move some stuff online and refocus some of it to around how we support people at this difficult time. Um, one of the other uh, pilots that we're looking to do is a financial first aider. It's very much based on a mental health first aider, and uh, we're hoping to pilot that at some point when we can actually get into to do that sort of work but we've had a lot of interest in this as a concept um, so that's really about having somebody who is in the workplace that people go to if, if they need to talk about and get help with money. So really that was very much a whistle stop tour. I'll get Sandra to send out the presentation and some of our links to our information and guidance um, and really just I suppose my ask for everybody is that when we do uh, issue out the challenge group uh, packs for each of these areas that we get as much feedback from you as, as, as much as possible and that you can support this engagement as we go forward. So thank you very much. Thanks Alison and thanks to all our speakers. Um, we are going to take some questions if anyone has anything they want to ask so just use the questions tab. Um, be helpful if you just say who you're directing the question to, otherwise um, I'll just open it up to any of the panellists to answer. So the first question um, is for John, I think. Um, is there scope to look at affordable credit for those employees who are really who really need it? Perfect timing for a private employer to be involved. Um. Sure, yes, I, I, I don't see um, why not. Um, I'm not really sure I'm in the sense that, it, can that question be broadened a wee bit? Is there scope for, if you just repeat it, sorry. So the question was, is there scope to look at affordable credit for those employees who really need it? Um, perfect timing for a private employer to be involved, maybe? It just came in when you were presenting. Ah, right, okay. Well, I mean, I, I suppose, I mean, um, I think, as I said there, the answer would be yes, um, definitely. I mean, we would work with um, any um, private employer now. I mean, and one of the things that we're actually going to do is, is under the Parental Employment Support Fund, you know, the, the fund for under the child poverty, which is about assisting um, Lone parents and parents, um, 35% who are out of work, and, but more crucially, 65% uh, people uh, in low pay who, who are in work. Um, and we're going to work uh, jointly with the employability service, services to go into, if they get into organisations first around looking about how they can support those their, their staff, where it be uh, qualifications, draft training, where it's about now topping up wages uh, for, for the staff then we, we were looking to go in behind them and talk about you know what it is the we can offer them from a financial inclusion team point of view whether it be money uh, debt advice budget advice but we would also talk about accessing affordable credit how can you save etc and then vice versa if, if we're able to get in uh, for with organizations under the community benefit um, aims under the Tackling Poverty Action Plan, then the Employability um, Parental Employment Support Fund could follow behind us also within that. Um, and ultimately, the overall aim is establishing this affordable credit forum. And then within the Council website, 
when you go into the tackle and poverty page, you'll see the three headings, you know, income from employment, income from social security benefits and, and the cost of living. Then when people click in the cost of living, they would then be able to, there'll be a subfolder underneath it talking about affordable credit. You click in that and then the idea will be probably similar to what Ian has done in the council's um, NL Life. You know, there'll be certain, you know, blubs on um, affordable credit, what's available, etc. And then you would get, as a resident of North Lanarkshire, um, able to um, see what was available within their area and you would have a choice um, whether you went to Credit Union, whether you went to Scott Cash, Conza or Fair For You or indeed whether you were maybe just wanting to go to the normal sort of kind of lenders but the main thing is to try and keep people away from payday loan lenders and, and the other high cost lenders. Um, I hope that answers the question but if not, I'm happy to clarify. That's great. There was just a follow up comment about the timing of delivery with the private employer was a challenge prior. Yeah, well, I, I think very well that came down to. Um, well, it, it might be best. Lynn will correct me if I'm wrong here, but it, um, the organisation we were working for. Um, there were one or two sessions held, and, and some of the staff did attend. But when we were looking to move into a sort of kind of the full sort of kind of program with them, just with the their sort of kind of contractual responsibilities and their timeframes, then the, the timing just wasn't right for for their staff group because obviously they had deadline dates to meet, or they would have suffered. Um, financial penalties uh, under the contractual arrangement, so that's why it sort of kind of had to be put off for a while over Christmas New Year period. We were then obviously then gearing up to to move into to do it again, but again, the the year end was coming up, so again they they were under pressure to to make sure that that they had their contractual responsibilities. And then obviously we're, we're moved into the coronavirus um, impact on, on folk as well. But I mean, that, that will be something that we will pick up with um, that company um, once we're, we're back to, to normal business. We won't just leave it, even though the local partnership may have ended, that, that is something that we, we will um, take on ourselves with that company and indeed any other company. Can I just also add that whilst we couldn't go and deliver the um, sessions, we did speak to um, their, their um, main contact that I worked with to see that we could um, obviously try and do um, sort of something electronically for them or as if, if there was one specific area which for this company was seemed to be understanding the pay slips there was things that we could put in place that they might want to include um, in their pay slips if, if they thought that was was suitable um, as well but we definitely do intend to go out again to them because we did get for such a small group of the, the people that were there, we did get a great feedback and we actually learned quite a lot about um, what people actually maybe don't understand about pay slips and things, for example. That's great, thanks. Um, we've got a question for the improvement service. So this one will be for you, Sandra, probably. Um, was there focus during the pilot on impacting beneficiaries via a uh, digital reach? If so, what work was carried out on this? Can you hear me now? Um, thanks, Lynn. In terms of um, all the engagement was mainly um, face to face other than the what Ian was touching on earlier, um, you know, and Ian probably can, you know, put, put this across um, better than what I can, but you've, you've seen the development of the, the online tools and resources within the employee benefits um, programme, the use of the, um, the online intranet site for um, council employees as well. 
Um, so there's access to, to e-learning um, programmes and there is plans, discussions in place to obviously look at developing that. I know we haven't gone into, gone into discussion around that, but um, so not to um, a great extent, the part of Lynn can probably, um, you know, talk to this as well within the workshops. Um, you know, there's there's been some of obviously that discussed, you know, around how people access advice. Um, we've touched on a couple of things like that during the one parent research as well to see what, you know, people's um, capacity and views are in terms of um, access and digital tools. So hopefully that's given you enough information. Thanks, Sandra. Um, we've got a question for John. Considering the challenge of COVID-19, which led which led most of the people to be out of employment on their income, will be lower low for them to afford legal fees. Is there any plans for funding institutions that offer legal services? Um, good question. Um, not at present. Um, I, 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 I think you know we we have found that some of the responses that the government has put in, where it be you know the mortgage holiday break, you know the help with um, for rent, private and social rent, um, help around credit card, and and obviously the eighty percent grant, and then obviously all the other stuff that they are offering businesses, you know that. Um, I think the biggest issue has been for, for the self-employed and, and I'm not sure if it had been announced already, but we are hoping that obviously the, the, there would be further protection put in for, for those folk too. Um, and I think from a, a, a money advice, debt advice folk, I think, you know, considering the circumstances that um, most folk do seem to be just doing what it is needs to be done and not taking action against people if it's um, you know, in this particular time, either. Um, but I'll, I'll take a note of it, and, um, and it's something that we can look at. But it's not something in particular um, I, I'm aware of, and, unless obviously, if if those services maybe come under the voluntary sector, because you know the Scottish government has recently announced a 350 million pound package, and some of that money is aimed at the voluntary sector, so that they continue to provide their services, which may include um, legal advice. I'm not sure if that answers the, the question. That's great, thanks. Um, I'll just hand back to Sandra um, just to kind of wrap the webinar up. Thank you everyone for staying towards the end there. I know we've run on, but um, I hope you found it really useful. Okay, thanks very much, Lynn. Um, thanks very much um, all the speakers and all the participants today. Um, good questions being asked there. Um, you know, there's maybe you know more if you want to keep an eye on in the papers that will come out, you know, from the learning, you might find more information there. Please do contact us at any time if you know, want to hear um, a bit more about what we've been doing. Um, so really good outcomes, really, you know, good um, relationships strengthened, new partnerships formed, new referral pathways. Um, lots of good learning, good questions being coming out there as well about the the, the COVID-19. Um, we have, um, following this um, webinar, you will receive a survey from us to give us some, some feedback. Thanks very much for bearing with us through all the, the technical issues and trying to deliver this um, uh, today the way we are. Um, I know we've ran over. We are asking some um, feedback from you, um, you know, in your own capacity, you know, what you're doing. Um, within your own um, workplace or organisation, anything that you can share, any good practice. Um, if you want to keep in touch at all, um, we've also asked a question about you know, anything that you're doing that you can share and how you're responding to COVID-19 as well. So again, for the person that just asked that question, there might be you know, some, some information that will get fed back to us that we can also look at what we can share. So I really, um, you know, 
be pleased if you can contribute as much as you can and we've got a role in that you know to help them um, gather Alison earlier um, mentioned about sharing the information as well and um, my colleague Karen and I have been doing that um, around our different stakeholder networks on our knowledge hub platform um, as much as we can you know to get information out there and um, we support an elected member um, program and we've engaged with them um, we've got a group special group set up at the improvement service to engage with members so all this vital information we've been um, helping to, to to get that out to the, the people that, that need it um thank you all thank you so much um for lynn for facilitating and, and bearing with us all you've done a great job um my colleague susan's been listening in as well there wasn't any questions on the loan parent um, research that we're doing um, but we will share that with you at a later date and we'll ask a question in that in the survey as well. So please keep in touch. It's been a, a great pleasure to be involved um, with the project and for all of you um, engaging today. I hope you've got something out of it. So thanks again to all the speakers and keep in touch and thanks for listening. and Have a good day. Keep well, keep safe. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye.